Welcome back to my channel. I'm Madison. If you're new and I'm so excited to be back, I took a long needed break, just kind of regrouped. I took my MCAT. I finally got a job and I am moving too. So there's a lot that is happening, but this is a more serious video and a video that I am glad to be making it. And I'm glad to be sharing valuable information with the general public that I kind of wish was out there. I think back in my last video, I was just talking about how I just had a really, really tough week and I just had a lot go on. Obviously, since then, I'm in a really good place and I am loving life and how it is turning out right now. But I had a really weird test result. So I came back that I had latent TB, so tuberculosis, which is very rare in the US and not really commonly diagnosed. I am so glad that it is not active. There's two different types. I'm glad that I just graduated with my master's in microbiology and immunology at Tulane because I was more prepared and more understanding and just I kind of knew what I, I, I know of this bug. I had a few good lectures on this so I'm so thankful for my teachers that educated because even though sometimes you learn about things and you think that you'll never it will never be applicable to you sometimes it might and I was just glad that I had a better understanding and kind of knew the differences. I'll just share some of my knowledge with y'all. So first you have two types of TB. The TB is the same. I think it's the mycoplasma tuberculosis. I think that's what it is. There's two types. There's mycoplasma and then actually this might be mycobacteria. I'm going to have to look back and see. But anyway, it's just, it has a little, it's more lipidy, more waxy, but it's a cute little bug. I guess it's actually in the same, I think, family as leprosy. So just so we're clear, you're going to have active TB, which is that pronounced cough and that's the pneumonia and that's what's really dangerous to small children and to the elderly population and then you have latent which just means it's not active but it just kind of chills in your body so your body's at peace with it if you will so that's the one I have and all it is is you just have to go on an antibiotic for about four to three months I know they have an option for these two types I should have like looked it up but I'm taking the rifampin 300 milligrams twice a day for four months. That's the one I'm on. And they have some other ones that are three months, I know. And my infectious disease doctor told me that that one's a little bit harder on your liver. So that's why we're going the rifampin. And basically, I just wanted to kind of document my experience, even though thankfully I feel like fine and I didn't even know I had it. I did have that's typically where you get the skin PPD test. I did get that one and it did come back negative. So that was very strange, but I ended up having a blood test for one of my jobs and that came back positive. And I was like, what the heck? Maybe it was just mercury retrograde. Like surely I don't, like I didn't even catch COVID. I'm like, how would I catch tuberculosis in this year or whenever? And I ended up having it. So then I went to infectious disease doctor and we just put me on rifampin. So, I mean, the good thing is it is being treated. I am perfectly okay. There are some certain things with the antibiotics, which I will get into. I just kind of wanted to document my experience. So this is me post one month on rifampin, getting TB out of my system, if you will. The next clips will be whenever I go see the doctor and then whenever it's like the first week and just some of the side effects that I have, because this medicine is a pretty big deal for your liver. There are a lot of things. It is the only antibiotic that cancels out birth control. It You cannot drink on this. This actually turns all of your bodily fluids um, like orange or red. So I'm pretty sure you can't wear contacts on it. Don't. Or if you do, you def I'm pretty sure you can't because it will turn it orange. And apparently you're supposed to have orange tears. I have not experienced that. My eyes just, I feel like my eyes just don't look as clear if you will i feel like they kind of like a little like tinted but just i wanted to put this video out there one because i think the very first thing you do whenever you do get diagnosed with something like this is what do you do you web md you look it up i typically will always try and find someone who is also going through the same thing and see their experiences this is a harder antibiotic i just wanted to kind of be prepared or know what to look for which i was able to ask my doctor some good questions and I do share some probiotics that I'm using in the end. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to do a little intro. I introed it kind of in my car, but I didn't really like it. So this is me one month post latent TB antibiotic 
whatever. I think it's very interesting and this is part of my, I guess, love. I love talking about microbiology and I love that I did have an understanding of this before getting this diagnosis. Um, but my doctor did say it is like, it's not common, but like people wouldn't know unless they randomly get blood tested and then one day figure it out. I've only been out of the country twice and the last time I went was two years ago and then four years ago. So I don't know how long I've had it. Um, and obviously with having latent, the whole reason that you do get treated is because there is a chance that it will reactivate into the active. That's where you can spread it. Latent TB you cannot spread. It just chills in your body. So the active is actually spreading. And the US is, is one of the few countries that doesn't give the tuberculosis vaccine. I'm pretty sure, I needed to go back through my notes for this. The TB vaccine doesn't protect against latent. It's just the active form and it mainly is used for children because tuberculosis is, is a big killer in children. And actually one of my professors is working on a vaccine. So glad. Glad she's improving that. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Madison if you're new. And today is a very, very different video. I have latent TB, um, tuberculosis. So um, I'm actually going to the infectious disease doctors right now. The good thing is it's kind of nice that I did just finish my master's in microbiology and immunology. So I do have some good knowledge on the microbacteria and the disease itself so i'm a little bit i guess i could comprehend it a little bit better speaking with the infectious disease doctor i guess i'm just happy that i can bring y'all along on my journey so if maybe anyone you know was diagnosed with latent tb or um maybe this just randomly happens to you and you come across this video i'm just glad that i can bring you on my journey and document it because I kind of wish that there had been something that I could have watched or listened to and also just kind of build a community because this is very, very rare and I don't really know what to expect either. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we're going to go to my doctor. Hello, so I just wanted to update y'all. Whenever you just don't feel good, like I don't feel like nauseous, I just don't feel like good. If that makes sense? Like I'm tired and like, I kind of feel nauseated, but like not really. Like I just don't feel 100%. Yeah, and I only took one and I literally, <laughs> I'm just hoping because I know she told me I would definitely be like nauseated and stuff for a few days. So I really hope that is not the case. So I just wanted to show you all some of the products that I'm also going to be supplementing with my antibiotic. I actually have to be on my antibiotic for four months. And if there's anything that I learned from my one year masters in microbiology and immunology, it is how important your gut microbiome is and how sometimes certain antibiotics or just antibiotics in general can Whenever they get rid of the bad bacteria, sometimes they can also get rid of that good bacteria that you've made. It's very, very interesting. Um, and they finally have de decreased some of the antibiotic use, especially with the rise in antibiotic resistance. So I just wanted to show you all some of the products that I'm gonna be supplementing with. Obviously you can run into using too much. I know one of my doctors was telling me that, that you don't wanna to add too, too much just in case, but I have a pretty good microbiome set up, I guess, but one of the one things that I use is the Sarah's Day Body Bloom. And this actually, let me see what it has. It has starch powder, fermented blend, and I'll show you all some in the back. But I just like using this in the morning and I've used this honestly since January or so. And another thing that I'm going to be using is this two strand probiotic strain which is the Bacillus subtilis and coag, I'm really bad at pronunciation, so, but I'll show y'all, these are these. And I just kinda like using these because I know sometimes whenever you do get it on antibiotics, it can mess up your stomach. And I feel like this just makes sure that it's all good. So I'll probably take the probiotics every other day or so. And then this is another one that I love. This is called the Good Belly Probiotics. Looks like this, it's in Whole Foods, but I did get a different 
flavor. And this actually has a different probiotic strain than the other one, so I like it. Um, let me see. Yeah, this one has lactobacillus, which if you eat yogurt, Greek yogurt, that typically has a lactobacillus, and I definitely want that one. It's very important for women too, and their overall health. And obviously I'm gonna be taking a multivitamin, but yeah, I just wanted to share some of those products in case you are maybe going on an antibiotic, or maybe you didn't know that it's best to supplement with probiotics or prebiotics when you're on antibiotics. I know there's been a few studies, but I definitely benefit from them. And if anything, I know how important your gut microbiome is. So these are just a few products that I'm gonna be using too. A little update post one month. Um, no real side effects. I've drank like one drink a week or every other week on it and I've been okay. The only thing is I think you just feel more intoxicated faster, if you will. I just get really, really sleepy. Tears weren't orange, which is very disappointing. But yeah, so. So I just wanted to thank y'all again for watching this video. And if you did get diagnosed with latent TB, it's honestly not that bad. I know my doctor said that from now on, you'll always test positive, even if you were treated for it. So I would just always have to get a chest x-ray to make sure it's not active. Go give it a thumbs up and comment. If you have latent TB, comment below. I'd love to know how many more of us there are out there, especially in the US since it's so rare. And yeah, I get excited. I know I'm going to have a lot of upcoming videos. I'm moving. I will announce the job that I have and probably do a little video with that. And I'm just living life, living the post-grad life. I am still trying to get into med school this round or this year. So I'll probably do a video on that too. And yeah, thanks so much. Love y'all. Make sure to subscribe.